Hi guys, welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show in Vancouver. I'm Crystal, it's nice to see you. Hi Sabrina, hi Saskia. Welcome to my living room, welcome to my view, part of it anyway. And if I do this, you can see all the beautiful clouds and it's so pretty here. I wanted to show you some of what I get to look at every day. I wake up in the morning and this, basically this view like changes all day long. We get, you know, the sunrise and the sunset. It's just, anyway, it's stunning. But today's episode is, uh, what kind of business are you capable of creating that you haven't yet chosen? Hi, Bobby John. Hi, Claire. What kind of business are you capable of creating that you haven't yet chosen? Um, I have so much to talk about around this topic, and I went into my Reinventinator group the other day, and I or yesterday, and I asked everybody if they had questions about business, online business, you know, um, any type of business really. And everybody posted some really cool stuff. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go through those questions today because I think they're questions that a lot of us have. And um, I want to start by saying that everything you're capable of lies on the other side of everything you're comfortable with. Everything you're capable of lies on the other side of everything you're comfortable with. And that includes every single solitary limitation. There's so many places in my life, in my world, where I'm willing to like expand way beyond, you know, see what's possible, fly by the seat of my pants, you know, try this, try that, you know. And then there's other areas I've realized lately where I really, really, really like to keep it, keep my cards close to the chest, not expand too far, because what if I'm to blah, blah, blah. Like, what if I'm, and I don't even know what that is, you know, at the moment, in the moment, I'm just, no, know that I'm stopping myself and that's all I know. Um, but one of the things that I've been challenging myself with is this question of what am I actually capable of that I haven't yet chosen? What kind of business am I capable of that I haven't yet chosen? What possibilities are available to me that I haven't yet chosen? Because everything that you're capable of, every possibility that's available to you is on the other side of everything that you've ever known. And it may come out of things that you know. It may come out of, you know, it will come out of skills and capacities and talents that you already are. Uh, but it's on the other side of what you're comfortable with. And knowing that, I've been really inviting myself in every area of my life, in my business, in my life, in my, in my relationship, to start choosing the choices that are not the most comfortable, that are not the things that I would normally choose, that are not the patterns that I normally do. If I normally go this direction, I'm playing with going this other direction. If I normally do this kind of thing, I'm playing with doing, well, what if I did something else? If this is normally hard for me, then I'm asking, well, what if this was easy? Because I'm realizing that everything that I'm asking for is demanding all of me. And anywhere that you're stopping yourself or making yourself small or you know limiting yourself is that place where you don't actually get to be all of you. So that's just something to play with. And... I have a lot of really amazing questions that people posted today about this topic that I want to share with you and give you some tools around. And if you have any questions about the topic, go ahead and put them in the chat and I'll, and I'll talk about them. So one of the questions, I got about 10 questions about this topic. Um, and I said, what are your top questions about business, about online business? And one of the questions that came through first was, when the money flow changes, what are the best questions to ask? When the money flow changes, what are the best questions to ask? The first thing you've got to be willing to do when the money flow changes is not go to any conclusions. And that is like, I would say that's probably, that will be your home play for the rest of your life, is not go to any conclusions. Um, usually what we do when the money flow changes is we go into judgment of ourselves. So we, especially like, online business is this particular little microcosm where um, you, a lot of people try to go into figuring out what caused that, what caused it. Was it the way that I put my Facebook ad up? Was it the way that I did my landing page? Was it the copy? Was it the email? Was it the hi, Simla? Um, hi, all of you guys. Was it, what was it? What was it that I did that created that end result? And the, the problem with that is that it's assuming that this end result was caused by something you did. And it doesn't actually ask a question of like, well, what is this? What can I do with it? Can I change it? And how can I change it? Which are four questions in Access Consciousness that we give you in the very beginning, give ourselves in the very beginning, that very few of us use. Um, but it, it asks a question. So when the money flow changes, it's just going, okay, so what is this? What can I do with it? Can I change it? And if so, how can I change it? 
and starting to get awareness of what the possibilities are instead of going into the conclusion of why did it change and how did it change and how can I fix it? Because there's another assumption that we make when money flow changes that there's a problem. If money flows change, then we have a problem and now we have to fix the problem instead of doing something totally different to outcreate it. So, so I've been really practicing, especially around money, going interesting point of view. I have this point of view and this creation could have created this much money and, and maybe in the future it will. Hi, Torgan. But it didn't this time. It created whatever it created. And now here I am. And interesting point of view. I have this point of view. So what can I create next that would generate even more money, that would generate more money, that would be fun to play with? Like I go into question and I go into creation instead of conclusion. And, and the other thing that I've been really wondering about with some of my stuff, because I do a lot of online programs, is like, hey, is there, is there another way that I can launch this into the world next time? Does this program want to be in the world again? And if it's a yes, I'm going, okay, is there another way that I can launch this into the world that would create more? And constantly being willing to play with it. And this is something that I talk to about a lot when I coach people in business. It's like, hey, this is all this stuff with like Facebook ads and you know, putting stuff out into the world and doing videos. It's stuff that you have to be willing to play with. Because if you go into the conclusion of this is supposed to create that result, you, first of all, you're going to be pissed off and upset and, and you know, you're not going to, your expectations won't be met. And the thing is about projections and expectations is that as soon as you have projections and expectations of something, you've set yourself up for separation, judgment, and rejection. That's what projections and expectations do. So that's what you're creating from that place. And so when you're beginning to play in this online world, especially in anything with business, like I used to have a pizzeria. And we would play with um, signage on the road. And so we would rent this like big black sign. And we were in an area that was hard to see, but we had this major road that went by. And so we would rent this sign every month that um, put out a pizza special. Uh, like, I don't know, once a month or so. I don't remember how often we did it, but I would play with it. I would play with this special, and then I would play with that special. And then I would say, what does this create? And what does that create? And some created a lot, and some like made us too busy. We needed more staff. And some didn't do anything. And so, but that was choice creating awareness and that was just the play of creating more business. So that would be my other massive invitation is like, what if nothing about business or money flows was significant and you could just literally play with the next thing to see what it would generate and to see what you could create. All right. Then I got an awesome question from Saskia. She goes, sometimes when I ask questions, it becomes a figuring out energy. I want to know. I want to know, I want to know becomes some sort of wish for conclusion. Does anybody else do this? Where, Because we talk a lot about in Access Consciousness about asking questions. So you want to ask a question to get an awareness. Um, exactly, Megan. Um, but there's no, so she's, so she's going, so sometimes when I ask questions, it becomes I'm trying to figure something out. There's no space in that, but it seems like I need a yes or a no sometimes to move on. So I use questions like an oracle. How can I have awareness and choice instead? Sounds weird? Yeah, that's my mind. Well, welcome to everybody else's mind on planet Earth, Saskia. Um, and here's something I want to just throw in there is a reminder that you're psychic and that the things that are going on for you are also going on for 360,000 other people around the world, give or take. And so every time that you have something coming up in your world, every time you ask a question, it's a gift because there's so many other people that are dealing with the same thing. So does anybody else on here ever use questions as a way to try to get the right answer so that you know which way to move forward? I don't know when it was, but it was recently when I realized that I was trying to do that. I was actually trying to get the information, the right information, so that I could know what choice to make so that I could like create my business. Hello. And, and the thing about questions is that they're not, they're not for that. Um, they are, questions are there to give you a sense of the future you're creating. That's it. They're, they're there to give you a sense of your awareness. They're there to give you information that, um, change the here a little bit, um, that you wouldn't have otherwise. So, so I think the thing to do when you know you're doing something, I'll get to that, Sabrina. When you know you're doing something, like Saskia, for example, knows that she's asking questions to try to get an answer. The thing that I've been doing is when I start to notice myself doing something that's weird, and let's use that as an example. It's sort of weird. That's like thought, what questions are for. I start to look at what my agenda is. Like, what's my agenda with this? What is it that I'm trying to prove? Because you only do things to prove points of view like that. You know, so it's like somewhere in there, there's a point of view that 
you know, you, you can't do this, you um, don't have what it takes, you don't actually know. Somewhere in there, there's a point of view that if you just relied on your knowing and your sense of things, then it wouldn't be enough. And so therefore, you have to get validation from the universe that you are correct or, you know, you've got the right thing going and blah, blah, blah. You guys have heard this a million times before, but there's no right and there's no wrong. There just is. There's just choice. There's just what you want to create. So one of the things that I've been using for, my, for myself in these places where I'm being really weird is I'm like, is this creating what I desire to create? Is this thing, is this way of functioning creating what I desire to create? If it's not, then where else can I function from that would change it? And this is a, this is a, what I'm talking about here is a, a practice of magnitude because you have to be willing, be willing to be really present with yourself and not check out with like judging yourself. Check, judging yourself is a checking out of where you're functioning from. So you've really got to be willing to stay really present with yourself and going, okay, so this is where I'm functioning from. Is it creating what I desire? Yes or no? If I let go control and I was willing to be wrong, what would that create? If I let go control and I was willing to choose in any direction just to see what it created, what would that create? If I let go control, what would that create? And, and then just pock and pot everywhere you're trying to control yourself into the ground and everywhere you're trying to control the universe to so doing exactly what you want because you've decided and you know best and then go, okay, so what would it be like to really trust myself? What would it be like to just know that I know that I know and to choose because I choose because I choose? What would that be like? Okay, Sabrina, how do you fight the fear of success? I've just started my online business and it has great potential and I'm excited, but also scared of moving into success. Okay, cool, that's a great topic actually. Um, the first thing really, really, really is to get that fear is what we call a distractor implant. It's not actually real. And this is a bit of a bitch when you've like spent a lot of time in fear. You know, and I know we deal with fear as a topic around money and around business a lot. You know, the fear of not having any money, the fear of not succeeding, the fear of it failing um, seems to be real, right? It's like you can, you have sensations in your body. Um, you understand those to be fear. That's what you've been told. That's what you understand. And so we function from there. But the two things that were really interesting is like, how do you fight? and fear of success. So if fear is not actually a real thing, and this is, this is where you have to really be willing to use the tool, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Is fear actually real? No, okay, if I'm not afraid, then what is it? Am I actually excited and I don't wanna acknowledge it? Because fear and excitement show up physiologically the same in your body. And I, you know, there's times I don't wanna look at this. There's times I'd love to believe that I'm afraid still. And I'm you know, four and a half years into really having this information and using this information and having an online business. And there's still times when I wanna believe, oh, I'm afraid, I don't wanna, you know, like I went to Toastmasters. Oh, I'm going again tonight. I went to Toastmasters last week and you know, they had this part of the, the thing where anybody could get up and speak extemporaneously where they would give you a topic and you could speak. And I was this close to standing up and I had all this energy in my body that I now know is not fear. It's just free energy going, whew, you know, and I didn't choose it, but tonight I'm going to choose it. And there will still be that free energy floating through my body. And when I get up to speak, now what I know I can choose is like pulling energy from everybody in the room and lowering all my barriers and letting that energy flood my body and flood my face and let the words come out that are going to come out. But all of that is information that I didn't have when I first started. Because I bought that I was afraid, I would get up in front of people and I would lose my words and I would think I had nothing to say and then I would get embarrassed because I thought I was afraid. But now that I know that that energy is not fear, it actually enables me to use other tools and to be more of me, which is really, really cool. So the first gift to give yourself is literally stop telling yourself you're afraid. Because if there's, you know, we talk about in the 10 keys to total freedom, don't tell, listen to, or buy the story. Right? Don't, don't listen to, tell, or buy the story. Well, this is n never more true when it's you dealing with you. Don't tell, listen to, or buy your own story. So it's like if you've been consistently telling yourself that you're afraid of success and you've got this story running in your world, that now is the time to outcreate if you'd like to move forward. And so if you're not actually afraid of success, what are you? Are you more excited than you've ever acknowledged? And do you have more capacity here than you've ever acknowledged? Two things to play with. I've just started my online business and it has great potential and I'm excited, but also scared of moving into success. Yeah, again with the, I would just use interesting point of view, interesting point of view, I have this point of view that I'm afraid of success. Is that actually true? Am I actually more excited 
about success and do I know that I can do this in a way that I've never acknowledged? Cool. That's an awesome question. Um, so, and somebody else asked here, how to engage new clients and keep existing clients engaged. So one of the first things that I started to do in my online business is I stopped referring to people as clients. Now, people that are clients from the point of view of like, I want to serve them really well. If they are in my business, it's like, for me, it's like working in a really nice restaurant. So if you're coming into the restaurant where I'm the host or I'm the server and you're sitting in my section, I want you to have the best experience. You're welcome, Sabrina. I want you to have the best experience in my section that you could possibly have in my restaurant. I want you to have the best food. I want you to have service in a timely manner. I want to make sure that your wine doesn't ever go empty. I want to make sure that I clean the table before you ask me to. That's all stuff that I have in my world as, as the way that I want to be in the world, the kind of server I want to be in the, in the restaurant that you come into. So I treat my online business very much like that. Like if you are on my email list or you are in one of my programs, like you are in my world now. And now you get to have the kind of experience that I want to create for you, which is like, I want you to love being in my world. And so that was one of the things that I did for myself right up front was I started not referring to people as clients because it kind of put, it makes you guys who are sitting here on the other end of this phone, watching this Facebook live sort of into a number. It's like, you're just a number on my email list or you're actually people. Did you guys know that? Did you guys know that you're people? Hi, people. You know, you guys are people. Everybody who pays you for a class is a people. Everybody that um, plays in a Facebook group with you is a people. Everybody that, they're all people. So I was like, okay, well, as people, like, how do I like to be treated? What do I, what would be fun for me to create for these people? And that for me has really, really changed, you know, like, because I like, I have a free Facebook group, right? I mentioned that. And I never, I never started it because I didn't know how to keep people engaged in a Facebook group, I thought. That was the story I kept telling myself. I don't know how to keep people engaged in a Facebook group. Well, then I started looking at it, and I'm like, is that true? Almost every single program that I do has a Facebook group. So is it actually true that I don't know how? No. Okay, so what do I know about this that I've never acknowledged? And what if, the way, what, if what I know looks totally different because I'm willing to be something different with the people that are in my group? And so I've been playing with that. And we have a lot of people that are engaged in my group. But mostly because I talk to them and I engage you guys as if you're people. And you're not just people in my group. Or you're not just, you know how, and that, that has been the biggest game changer for me. Is really, really acknowledging everybody who plays in my business and on my list as a people. So what would change in your business if instead of just, you were just collecting money or trying to make money or trying to make money off your next program, you were actually like, hey, these are people. Like, what can I say to them? What, what would what would I want to hear? What would be fun for me to watch? What would be fun for me to respond to? Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Simon. Um, right? So play with that and see if that changes anything. And let's see what else. Oh, so this is a great question. So when it comes to online business, how do you start your list when you have no one subscribed yet? So basically, how do you start a list from zero people, which is by, by the way, that's where all of us start is zero people on our list. Um, and the thing is, there's no one answer to this. One of, I've heard so many different takes on starting a list. You know, one of the, well, first thing I want to say is like when I first started in Access and started like doing free calls and things like, I had no value for having an email list. Like I had zero value for it. In fact, I've probably started and uncreated and destroyed six different email lists. And the one that I have now is actually, if you're on my email list now, like my target is to you know, get you stuff that actually contributes to you and, you know, write stuff that's fun to read and all that kind of stuff. But I didn't have any, hi Rashid, hi Kathy, I didn't have any value for having an email list. So the first thing I want to talk about is there, there is tremendous value in having an email list. And one of the biggest things that I realized about having a list was that if I, if I, I was having a lot of success, like reaching you guys through Facebook, right? And so all of my eggs were in one basket and they were in the Facebook basket. And instead of sending out emails initially, I was just sharing a lot on Facebook and getting the word out into groups and things like that and doing videos and you guys would sign up, some of you, and, and that was great. And so I was getting immediate result, but it wasn't creating for now and the future. And that's what I find with an email list as an email list and being willing to nurture and grow one creates for now and the future. Because generally speaking, the people that are on your list are the people that want to hear from you. Now, if they don't want to hear from you, they'll unsubscribe. Trust me, they do that. Um, so 
that's what I had to change. That was my one perspective that I wanted to throw in there first when it came to having an email list is that an email list is a creation for now and the future. Now, to if there's so many different ways of inviting people to be on your email list and you know, you've got all different kinds of opinions out there about how you can do it. One of the ways that I've heard is um, when you're going to create a paid thing. So if, for example, you just want to start doing sessions online, you're a, your coach, your facilitator, you want to start doing sessions online. Um, one of the things you can do is you can create, it's called creating content, right? Like it's, you create something that provokes, that adds to people's lives, create something that adds to somebody's life and then invites them to give you their email address. Their email address is a gift to you. I don't know about you, but I get a lot of email and the only people's lists that I stay on are the ones that contribute to me in some weird way. I may have never bought anything from them, but I, like, I have this guy that writes a daily email to me. Uh, he's called the incomparable expert. I, I, re I replied to his email the other day and I was like, you know, there's only two people's emails that I read every single day and that's Seth Godin and you. And I was like, it's because you don't try to sell to me all the time. You're just writing to me. I love that. And because I love that, I've been asking myself, like, what could I create that would be really similar to that? Where it isn't just trying to get people to, you know, join into a program, but where it's actually like a contribution just all the time. And I just do it different. I do a lot of videos. So, yeah. Thank you, Kathy. And, um... So all of that to say that you just have to choose. You really literally just have to choose one thing. You could choose to write a little ebook on a topic. You could choose to put together a PDF of steps that you use, of tools that you use. You could choose to do a free call, which I do a lot of. Um, you know, the free calls that I've done in November and December invited 400 new people onto my email list. Thank you guys for being on it. Um, you can do so many different things. So it isn't that you have to be anywhere to start. You literally just have to choose a place to start and then start. So if you want to invite people into private sessions with you, what is it about working with you that's different? What do you know that's different? And then you can use that information to create something and then see what it creates. And this is the play of creating business. And this is why I, I love what I do because I, um, <laughs> I love reading email from you and I was wondering why I read your email the other day. Yeah, that's so cool. And you know, in my emails, I really, I try to engage my sense of humor <laughs> as much as possible because, you know, email so, from so many people is so serious and it's so boring. So sense of humor is really important to me. And also like that I'm giving you things that are going to add to your life, whether you ever pay me for anything. Uh, that's my target is to create more possibility in your world. And so all of that is included in creating an email list. It's, it's knowing what it's getting at, it's having a sense of the general thing you want to create in the world. You don't have to get specific yet because you'll get more specific as you create stuff. It's having a sense of that. It's having um, an interest in creating for now and the future. It's looking at, hey, what can I create that would invite people into, that would contribute to people's lives, that would um, invite them to give me their email address. And then after you have their email address, what can you create that would contribute to their lives even more? And... Um, you know, there's a lot of agendas with emails, and I catch myself in agendas all the time. What if, what if you could create from the space of no agenda, from the space of just desiring to create more possibility in the world, from the space of desiring to create money in a way that's fun? That's just a priority. It doesn't have to be an agenda. And when emails are sent and email lists are created from that space, they're really different, and it makes it fun to be on them. So that's just something else you can look at and something else you can play with as you're creating your empire. Okay, and this is a great question too because this is like this is a I need my ducks all in a row question. So Jenny Frithioff said, for me, something always seems to be missing um, to get yourself sorted. Oh, he, okay, so for me, something always seems to be working. I can't even talk right now. For me, something always seems to be missing. Got yourself sorted, insurance is running out. Um, got all your classes up to date, license running out. Got your logo, your website, your business cards, and who do you give them to? Um, <laughs> I've been almost there forever. I've been almost there forever. And what would it take for that to change? <laughs> CC, top 10 get you bits sorted to get your business off the ground tick list. So she's asking me for a tick list and then she laughed about that. The thing is, like, there isn't a lot you have to do to get your business started. You really just have to start choosing to do anything. So, you know, one of the things that I've been asking for is to 
um, get more out there into the community in Vancouver. And, you know, I, I started taking action on this a couple weeks ago. I started looking at meetup.com and then I was like, oh, these are boring. And then, but the thing that had been pinging me that sort of killed a few birds with one stone, it turns out, was going to Toastmasters. And to, I've also been asking to speak, but again, it was one of those things that I hadn't taken any action on. And so, so I was, that kept pinging me. So I finally chose it. And last week I went and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a room full of 50 people who you can meet, connect with, who are interested in what you're doing because you stand up and you introduce yourself. I had three people come up to me and ask me about what I did. And I didn't have any business cards, but I made connections and I swapped some phone numbers. And, you know, I can talk to those people later on when we get to chatting about what I do. And that's the thing is you don't actually need a whole lot to get started. You really just have to be willing to be, you really just have to be and do whatever it takes to get out there and, and start. That's really it. You know, when it comes to starting an online business, you just have to want to do something online. Okay, so you're like, well, what would you like to do online? Ask yourself. Well, I'd like to coach people. Okay, cool. What are the bare minimum things that I need to set up to start coaching people? And really, when you look at it, you need a way for people to pay you. You need a way for people to schedule themselves, which also can be done through Facebook Messenger. And so really, you need a way for people to pay you. You need a way for people to get in touch with you. And you need some sort of thing like Zoom or Skype to, upon which to have the session and maybe a way to record it, which is why Zoom is a lot easier because it records. And then you need a way to send the files after. That's it. That's all you need to, to start online sessions. And then you need a few people that are willing to play and try that. So the way I started having online sessions is I invited people into free sessions with me. I'm like, hey, come try this, you know? And, and it was rocky in the beginning because I didn't actually kind of get what I was doing. So I way over delivered and gave them too much. And then a lot of people didn't want to come pay me after. And, but it gave me so much awareness and it changed the energy. It like broke the seal. And that's the thing to do is start choosing the things that are going to break the seal. Because it's like anything, it's like freaking washing your bathroom, or cleaning your bathroom, or doing your taxes. It's like, it's those things that you put off forever because you create this little Pico universe in your head about what's required to actually get it started, and you never actually start. And then what turns out that what it actually takes to start is just to start somewhere. And then you get into one conversation which feeds this next thing, which adds this energy, which makes you inspired, which then creates this other thing. And it goes on this really non-linear ping pong thing that creates, that ends up creating your business. And so Jenny, the thing, and to any of you that are like trying to get your ducks in a row before you start is stop with the ducks and literally choose something that's going to change the energy. Choose a networking meeting, choose to go out and talk to people, choose to do a video, just choose it. And this is the thing is like, you know, the thing that does change it is choices, is your, is your choices. And that's probably my favorite tool is choice because it's choice from no point of view. It's choice from like, I wonder what this is going to create. And I wonder what I can do with this. And I wonder what this will be like. And, you know, and when I choose from that space, choice is my, ba my best and my favorite tool. And that would be what I'd invite all of you to play with is choose, choose one thing today that's going to move it forward or, or move you forward because you're the source of creation. So if it changes the energy for you, then the business has changed. The business is fine. The business is fine. The business wants to be. It's you that's, that's, you know, not doing or not choosing. And this is where my phrase, do it wrong, do it badly, do it anyway, comes in so dynamically of just invite yourself to doing it badly. Go network badly. Go do a terrible video. Um, I had a client and she, we opened up a private Facebook group for her and me for her terrible videos. And her terrible video was funnier than anything else that she, but it was funny because she just let herself be herself. And so what one thing can you choose that'll change the energy for you and invite in different possibilities? And I have like eight more questions. So if you didn't get your question answered or you, if this brought up more stuff for you, I'm inviting you, I have a free call at one o'clock that you're invited to that I will go into more of these on. And otherwise, um, I have all my ducks in a row. Still there is me that is losing faith when it seems no one chooses the contribution that was so light to bring into the world. And then there is this voice and I can't get to the rest of that, Saskia, but if you haven't already um, chosen the call today, come on the call and let's look at that. Uh, the thing about when you have an underlying point of view is that you'll prove it. And so if your underlying point of view is that nobody's going to choose your stuff anyway, you'll prove it to yourself and then you'll get to be disappointed and then you don't have to keep going. So I always look at when I have disappointment in my world, um, what expectations and projections I had and what I can do to change them. 
And that's all I have time for today. So if you love this, share it. And I will see you on the free call. And otherwise, I'll see you next week.